Hey, what's up guys? And welcome to my review and discussion of Attack on Titan chapter 119. And what a crazy chapter this was. Holy crap. I know I have said that about so many freaking chapters, but this manga is like the Trump presidency. Just when you think things can't get any worse, they fucking do. So there's some big theories going around about what exactly is going on in this chapter. And of course, before we go any further, I gotta warn you guys that this video is gonna contain spoilers. So if you haven't read the latest chapter, then what are you doing with your life? Seriously though, if you don't want spoilers, you might want to click on something else. If you're all caught up though, then let's get to it. So of course, I can't even begin to talk about this chapter without mentioning one of these theories. Because people have pointed out evidence for it all throughout the chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that as we go through the review. And then at the end, I'll give my thoughts on what's going on. Now, of course, the big shocker at the end of this chapter is that Aaron winds up with his head flying off of his body and presumably dead. Now, of course, I've got a lot of theories about this, but one big theory stands out that everybody seems to be talking about right now is the idea that this chapter, the majority of it, or even maybe more chapters from before, is actually a dream or a premonition of some kind. A vision that Aaron is having of the future. And we're going to go into further discussion about this in a later video. I'm going to try something new and we're going to have a guest on for the first time on Dark Logic Studios. This is a friend of mine, Cole99, who's been here for a long time. He's been part of this community ever since I started this channel, really from the very beginning, from the very first video. And we've been discussing this theory, and I'm going to have him come on. We're going to talk about the possibility of this theory actually being true and other theories that we have. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you guys will join me for that discussion. But for now, let's go ahead and get into this chapter. So we begin this chapter with Zeke in his new favorite position, face down, butt up. And I can't take credit for that joke. That was my friend's joke, but I thought it was really funny, so I'm using it. So Magnus shouting, Braun, Gallier, don't let Zeke and Aaron touch. If they use the power of the Founder, it's all over. Eat the Founder before they do. And Reiner's just like brooding. He's like, I knew it. Aaron, please just stop. So Aaron's running away, and this chapter is called Brothers Older and Younger. Of course, I think alluding to, obviously, Aaron and Zeke and uh, Colt and Falco, as we'll see later. So there's a hole in the wall, there's a hole in Zeke, Aaron's running away, but Galliard stops him, he chomps down on his leg, Aaron gives him a good whack like he's squishing a bug, and then BOOM! Peek shoots him in the head. So they see Aaron has stopped moving, so he's like, shoot the beast titan one more time! And then the survey corps come popping up around them, and Pike's like, God, you're so annoying! And I think that's Flock there, he's saying, don't let them fire! So then we see Armin and Mikasa, they decide they need to deal with Peak first. Got the rest of the crew, Connie's pissed. I mean, look at that face, holy shit. I not want to mess with him right now. Then Mikasa says, we need to handle the Marlan soldiers first. So then we see Pixis, he's riding a horse, leading the soldiers. And this is something that people were pointing out as inconsistent that may point to this being a dream or premonition of some sort. Is that later we're gonna see Pixis like hiding inside a building or something. But we'll take a closer look at that when we get to that point in the chapter. For now they're riding their horses, and then Armin's like, wait, we shouldn't be fighting them head on. Let's go follow Pixis. So Pixis and his soldiers are on the horses. Our crew is following them. Zeke is just laying there in his Titan. Looks like somebody just took a big scoop out of him and ate it for a snack. And he's kind of semi-conscious and he's realizing that he must have gotten shot. He looks up and he sees Aaron and Reiner fighting. And Reiner's trying to wake up Porco so he can help him capture Aaron. Or I guess kill him and take the founder from him. And Reiner reaches out for Galliard and somehow this triggers a memory of his brother. And it's of Marcel admitting to Reiner that he purposefully made his brother look bad in order to protect him, which consequently lifted Reiner up to a position where he became the warrior instead, even though he wasn't really that talented. It should have been Porco. So he sees this memory and it kind of he's kind of having a moment now. And Zeke starts to get up. Reiner and Aaron see him. Everybody's like, oh shit, Zeke is alive. And then he's like, he's like, Aaron, I will summon the Titans. Oh no! 
And strangely enough, it looks like Arian does not want this to happen. If you look at his face in this panel, he's got this look on his face like, holy shit, no, and then it says, wait. And I think that is coming from Aaron. We even see his titan reach out to Zeke, like, as if to say, stop. So that's interesting. And it's more evidence that shows that Aaron probably really isn't on Zeke's side at all. Now that weight could have come from Cult, because a couple panels later, we see him running out with Falco, screaming to Zeke, please wait. But it certainly looks like, based on the way Aaron's titan reacted, reaching out with his arm, that certainly could have been Aaron as well. The runner's like, what the heck are they doing here? So Colt runs towards Zeke and he's shouting at him, he's telling him that Falco drank some of his spinal fluid and begging him not to scream. And he's like shouting at Zeke, he's like, you remember me, right? I'm the one who's supposed to inherit the Beast Titan. Hoping, I guess, that Zeke would have some empathy for Colt and Falco. But Colt is like, the Zeke I knew would never make children into victims. And he asks him to just wait until him and Falco get out of range before he screams. But Zeke, being the heartless bastard that he is, is like, Really? Do you have any idea what I'm planning to do? I don't give a fuck about Eldian kids. And he's like, Bye! Even after saying that he understands how he feels about his little brother. You know, Zeke, you're just a turd in a monkey suit. I don't know what else to say. So Gabby's there. This is another thing that people had pointed out, is that Gabby was riding a horse, She's not supposed to know how to ride a horse, but now she does, apparently. And then Zeke roars, and Colt refuses to leave Falco by himself, so he grabs onto him. Falco's trying to tell him to go and run, what he refuses to. And that's just so sad. Like, kind of teared up a little bit reading this part. I'm not gonna lie. But then we see Pixis again, and he's apparently in a building now, and his armband is missing, which is another thing people were pointing to when it comes to this possibly being a dream. But anyway, then we get this unbelievable moment. I could not imagine this happening, but I knew that it was going to. Everyone who drank a spinal fluid wine is now becoming a titan. And you see this wide panel of the city and all these just explosions going on. And I can't wait to see this scene at this moment animated. It is going to be unfreaking believable Okay, so everybody else who didn't turn into a titan are like, what the fuck is going on? Bunch of Marley soldiers get jumped by all the new titans. And then we see one of the most amazing looking titans, I think, in the whole series. Like, I love how Isayama is able to make these just weird designs for these titans. And this has got to be one of my favorites right here, is Falco's Titan. Like, what the fuck is going on with his face? It is hilarious and horrifying at the same time. <laughs> Which is part of the reason I love this manga. So. <laughs> so Zeke orders Falco to attack Reiner. Reiner's trying to hold him back. Gabby looks up and she sees Colt laying there all fried to a crisp. Reiner's fighting Eren and Falco at the same time now. He's like, I can't, I can't do two Titans at once. So Aaron tries to escape again, he grabs him by the ankle, then Falco goes for Reiner's nape. Peek fires at Zeke again, and he's back on the ground, and Magath is like, I'm sure we finished him this time. Now we just gotta get the founder. Peek's like, there's no need for you to have a head. <laughs> Which is interesting, considering the very end of this chapter. But at that moment, she gets hit from behind by a thunder spear, I think, by Armin. He's like, damn it, I was so close. And Magath is like, shoot him down, but Mikasa comes to the rescue and, and slices their heads off. There's a lot of people losing their heads in this chapter. <laughs> Not just Eren. And Peek's like, it's over for you! Then Eren looks over at Zeke again. He's covered in steam, I guess because he's, he's now coming out of his titan. Falco has got Reiner, he's about to bite into him. And Reiner's kind of considering, like, should I just let him do it? Like, we've pretty much accomplished our mission. I can give the... I can give the armored titan to Falco and save him and finally fucking die. <laughs> and he also reasons that by saving Falco, he'll also be saving Gabby because Falco will make sure she gets home, I guess. But nope, 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 nope. Sorry, Reiner, your plot armor is just too thick. Falco decides, nah, Reiner doesn't seem like he probably tastes very good. It's probably a lot of grit and hard stuff to chew through even if he did weaken his armor. It doesn't seem very appetizing, but Galliard looks much more tasty. 
So Falco goes after him. Reiner's like, Porco! And he's like kind of talking to Reiner, even though Reiner obviously can't hear him. But he's, he's saying to himself that after he saw the memories, he knows for certain that he was the better warrior. He was always the better warrior. And that satisfies him. And he's like, well, I think I can die happy now. So he's like, whatever. Come eat, come eat me, Falco. I know. I'm good now. <laughs> so that's exactly what happens. Falco chomps down a yummy porco snack. So Falco is now, I guess, officially the new Jaw Titan. That's going to be interesting. But back to Reiner and Aaron. Reiner, like, punches Aaron in the mouth. And then he hardens around Reiner and kind of traps him there. And then he jumps out of his Titan and starts running towards Zeke. And here it comes. So Zeke's kind of crawling out of his Titan. He sees Aaron running towards him. Reiner breaks free and he reaches out towards Aaron. Zeke's like, Aaron! But then somebody shoots Reiner in the hand with a thunder spear, breaks his hand apart. It's Jean and Connie. <laughs> but Aaron keeps running. He's like, okay, thanks guys. Thanks for saving my ass again. Uh, but peace. Zeke's reaching out to him. He's like, come on, Aaron. You can do it. But then, uh-oh. Guess who's there? Everybody's favorite character. And she's got a gun pointed at the main character. Oh, this is not good for you, Gabby. So she lifts up the gun. I guess it's the same gun that Colt was holding earlier. Armin and Mikasa are still fighting Peek. She takes aim, she fires. And this is another thing I guess people were pointing out, is that that rifle is way too heavy for her to lift up that high, and that she didn't appear to experience any recoil. But anyway, that might be more evidence that this is a dream or a premonition or a false memory that Aaron has implanted in people. But anyway, she fires right straight through the neck oh dang that's a big hole holes in everybody heads flying off this chapter is just gruesome but anyway final panel the shocker holy shit aaron where is your head what happened it's like spinning off of him like a top and obviously zeke is horrified by this so dang what in the world is going to happen now is aaron dead it looks like he might be, I mean, his head fell off, but um, this is Attack on Titan, so there could be a lot more going on here that meets the eye. Okay, so as you've probably guessed, I do have some theories about this, and we'll talk about the dream theory too, but first let's talk about a few other possibilities. So when I first read the chapter, the first thing I thought of when I saw this scene was... <laughs> And the second thing I thought <laughs> when I saw this scene was... But the third thing I thought about when I saw this scene that was actually a theory was obviously, and I know a lot of people have probably thought of this too, that Aaron might transfer his consciousness somewhere else in his body. Just like Reiner did during the Return to Shingenshina arc, when they blew off half his head with those Thunder Spears. If I'm not mistaken, that's happened to him a couple times now, hasn't it? We've seen that happen more than once, I feel like. But even if so, that possibility is there, and it's never really been clear yet why this was put forth as something that Titans can do. Like, what significance does this have for the story, other than keeping Reiner from dying? when he should. But I guess it's kind of thematically appropriate that the armored titan, which is tactically built for defense, ends up being really really resistant to death. I don't know. Anyway, that that possibility is there and it's kind of an obvious one. And honestly I feel like it's too obvious. Like, yeah we've seen this before, we know that a titan shifter can lose their head and still survive. So in a way, it's kind of like, well, Aaron lost his head, so what? He's just gonna pull his consciousness down to his butthole and he'll be fine. But there could be a couple problems with that. And one is, we're not sure if Aaron even knows how to do this. And if he does, if he had enough time to transfer his consciousness between seeing Gabby with the rifle and the bullet actually hitting him. But nevertheless, the possibility is out there. And I do think it could happen, especially in conjunction with some of the other theories we're going to discuss in a minute. 
but I also think that because it's so obvious, it might be misleadingly obvious, if you know what I mean. Like, Isayama wants us to believe that Eren can easily survive this, but then he dies. Sad day. But anyway, the next possibility that I was thinking about after I read this was I thought about the Osmobita clan, and when Kiyomi Osmobita was talking about doing a test run of the rumbling, she was talking to Zackley on the dock, and if I remember correctly, the way she was talking about this sounded awfully similar to what Armin thinks Aaron's plan actually is, which is, of course, to use the Founding Titan's power to activate the Wall Titans in Shikanshina in order to essentially show the world that Paradis has this power and also to wipe out any armies that happen to be on Paradis and disable the military of these other countries that are attacking, specifically Marley. So, and what's interesting about that is if Kiyomi is involved somehow, she somehow knows what Eren is up to or, or is even an integral part of making it happen. Which seems very likely because, if you remember at the festival, we see her walking away because she knew what was going to happen. I think Kiyomi and Eren, I'm starting to feel more and more like they have some kind of alliance. And then of course, we have the whole Eren might be the father of Historia's baby thing. And if that's the case, then Historia might be in on it too. She might know what's going on as well. We don't know how many people might be involved. Obviously, if Kiyomi was talking about this to Zachary, or Zackley, however you want to say it, I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be, but she was talking to him about this, so he must have been in on it as well, or at least, or at least knew about it. So this is really interesting here. We've got all these little strings leading back to all these previous chapters. Just some things to consider when moving forward. Like, how many people are really involved in this? Is Aaron really working on his own? We know that Zeke is supposedly involved, but I think Aaron is playing Zeke for a fool, and maybe whoever else is in on this with Aaron is aware of that. Who knows? Maybe the Osmobito clan is going to pop in at some point and, and save the day or something. Now, a third possibility, and this is one that I feel like is one of the most likely ones, is the idea that Eren is, in fact, really dead because I, I've always kind of felt like Eren wasn't going to survive to the end of this manga. He was going to die at some point and not from the Ymir curse, from something else. <laughs> if things are really going the way Armin seems to think they are, then Eren could very well be martyring himself for the sake of Eldia or whatever. <laughs> so... So I do think it would be interesting if Eren had this master plan and wasn't able to execute it. He died before he got to do what he wanted to do. And then later we find out what his actual plan was, whatever it was. And it could be quite tragic. But anyway, what's gonna happen though, right now, after Eren loses his head and everybody sees that the Founding Titan is down, He's literally got his head off, his spinal fluid is exposed to the world for anybody who wants to take a sip. You gross. So what's going to happen right at this moment? If this is really happening, and Eren is really dead, what does that mean for literally the next few moments of this story? Well, I think after everybody sees Eren just laying there without a head, there is going to be a mad dash for who can eat the Founding Titan first. Obviously, we've got a whole bunch of Titans on the battlefield right now. You've got the Armor Titan, Reiner. We've got Falco now as the Jaw Titan. Who knows how long it's going to take him to pop out and regain consciousness again. But, you know, Falco's the Jaw Titan now. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> we've got Peek, and then of course we've got Zeke there right in front of him. But also we've got Armin. Now he's not in Titan form right now, obviously, but he could become a Titan anytime he wanted to. And... In this situation, I can imagine Armin thinking to himself, you know, holy shit, my best friend is missing his head, but then quickly coming to the conclusion that if he doesn't eat Eren, somebody else is going to get the Founding Titan power and the Warhammer power and whatever else he's got, and uh, 
it cannot be any of the other Titans on the battlefield or it's going to be in enemy hands. The only possibility that would work in the favor of the Survey Corps and our characters, our Elian characters, is if Armin turned into a Titan and ate Eren. And that sounds insane, but I can totally see that happening for a number of reasons. First of all, it's obviously the most logical choice, really the only choice when given the circumstances that Armin and the Survey Corps are in right now. Armin probably isn't going to want to believe that Eren is dead. And in fact, I can actually even imagine Mikasa possibly even encouraging Armin to do this. Not out of spite or anything, but just because she's to a point where she's let go of Eren. She left the scarf behind, and that's got to be significant somehow in the way she reacts to the situation. It's going to be different than before Eren said all those horrible things to her and basically, in her eyes, I think, betrayed them and turned his back on them. It sounds really crazy, but I definitely think it could happen. And again, because I also think that Armin has got to be the narrator of the story. Same voice actor in both the Japanese and the English versions, I'm pretty sure. So I've always felt like Armin has got to be the one telling the story. Telling the story of his best friend, who sacrificed himself and his humanity to save them. And remember, Armin had said so many times before that only someone who can sacrifice their humanity can save humanity. Or only a person who can become a monster is capable of defeating monsters. Something to that effect. So I don't think Armin is really even surprised or even judges Eren for making the choices that he has made. Because Armin always understood that Eren, one of the things he said when he would say that line is that I think Eren is capable of doing that. So this isn't shocking to Armin in any way. And I also think that he would feel that Eren, under no circumstances would he want Marley to have the founding titan. Because if he's right, and if what he believes is the truth, Eren still is on their side. But he's acting on his own. He wants to take the fall himself. He doesn't want to get the people he really cares about involved. So I think Armin believes that Eren would want him to do that if it became <laughs> under those specific circumstances which we are in right now. If Eren had to be eaten by anybody, I'm sure he would prefer Armin. <laughs> that sounds so weird. And you know, because Armin is the colossal titan, he's so big, I don't think it would be difficult for him at all to overpower the other titans and eat Eren. Like, no problem. He could probably eat the rest of them too while he's at it. Yummy lunch. Alright, so last but not least, let's talk about the dream theory, or the false memory theory, I think is more accurate. Because calling it a dream in the traditional sense is, I think, a little inaccurate for what we're probably dealing with if this is not actually happening right now. So, how likely is this to be true? Well, first let's talk about why people think this might be happening, and then I'll get into what I think. Now, I admit, I did not think of this theory at all. I... It did not dawn on me at any point that this might actually not even be really happening. But my friend did. He and a lot of other people, apparently. And I suppose there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, I can totally understand wanting to believe that this is a dream of some sort, a vision, a false memory, whatever. Because obviously Eren, who is the main character, is potentially dead right now. So, love him or hate him, he's the main character and, um... Yeah, main characters don't usually die, but this is Attack on Titan, and I definitely wouldn't put it past Isayama to kill Eren off at some point. I definitely think it's a possibility that he's really gonna be dead, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Another thing, though, is that, as I mentioned before, there seem to be a lot of little inconsistencies throughout the chapter that people have pointed out, and I pointed some out as we were going along. I don't think I got all of them, but there are a lot of little things going on, that people have pointed to as saying that there's something weird going on here. And I'm actually not going to be getting into the details of all those little things in this video. Because to me, all of those seem, I don't know, just a little bit insignificant to me. They're kind of trivial. They can be easily explained away. And, um, and while some of them might be clues, it's also possible that they could be mistakes or, you know, oversights. But... To me, what's really important 
and what really weighs in on this possibility for me is is this possibility actually possible is it plausible is it relevant is it consistent with the themes that we've seen throughout the story is it consistent with the physical possibilities that we have witnessed or been told about in this world and the answer to all of those questions unequivocally is yes and that's why i think this theory could definitely hold water so first of all if this is a dream or a false memory or something of that nature i think there could be two different things going on here so here are my two theories on a theory i guess which i'm sure other people have talked about as well but here's my my take on it the first possibility is that Aaron could be seeing a possible future, a possible series of future outcomes based on the decisions he is making now. This is possible because we've already seen that Aaron can vividly experience past memories. We saw this at the end of the Return to Shingen Shina arc after they found the three books, his father's books that he hid in the basement that talked all about the outside world. Aaron, his memories from his father were so vivid and so intense that he felt like he was actually there. And the reason we know this is not only from his reactions to these memories or these dreams even, because at one point he was actually asleep and he woke up screaming when he saw the memory of Dinah turning into a Titan. But other times he was awake when he was experiencing these memories, these flashbacks almost. Like at one point he woke up, quote unquote, woke up from a memory, but he was fully awake and he was just kind of standing there talking to himself. And Armin, Hanji, and Levi are just standing there watching him. And Hanji's like, who are you talking to? What are you doing? <laughs> so we know that Aaron himself can experience past memories from previous holders of his titans especially from his father because as it has said before that memories are more easily passed down if it's through a family member a blood relative so theoretically he could very well be experiencing future memories as if they're actually happening just like he did with the past memories of grisha but then comes another question is seeing memories in the future even possible and the answer again of course is yes and how do we know that? Well, we don't know this for sure. We haven't exactly seen it, but we've gotten a couple clues. And the first one is actually at the very beginning of both the anime and the manga. Now you might know that the anime and the manga actually start out a bit differently. In the manga, Eren appears to see a future flashback or flash forward of Mikasa as an adult because you see her hair is shorter than it actually is at when she's at that age and she's saying see you later in the anime we get something a lot different but appears to be suggesting kind of the same thing Aaron wakes up from a dream or rather a nightmare while taking a nap under a tree during this nightmare we see flashes of different things presumably this is something that Aaron was dreaming about before he woke up because that's what was happening right before he woke up on the screen but anyway we see a number of different things that appear to be from future events in the anime we see titans attacking we see titans attacking places within the wall that were previously not occupied by the titans we see dead survey corps members and we even appear to see a little figurine it's partially melted but it seems to resemble either a marley soldier or specifically Helos. As you remember, they talked about him during the Marley arc. He was this mythical Marleyan hero. And in Eren's dream, it appears that Eren may have seen a little figurine of this Helos character, or even just a Marley soldier or a Tiber soldier. It actually looks more like one of the Tiber's personal guards. So all the way, this is in Eren's dream, presumably. So that's really interesting as well, because that's way in the future. <laughs> so even back then, we were getting clues of all this stuff that was going to happen, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so what the manga and the anime both seem to be suggesting is that Eren had, for some reason, experienced memories from the future during this dream that he had when he was a kid. And 
Of course, this has been speculated forever, ever since the very beginning. But of course, after all this happening, it puts it in a whole new context. And so we've already got from episode one, the possibility that Aaron can see the future. But why would Aaron be able to see the future even before he inherited the Titan? Well, that could be a whole other theory in and of itself and would need a whole other video to discuss it. So we'll save that for another time. But there is a second clue that lends itself to the idea that Aaron might be experiencing a memory from the future within his own mind. And for that, we got to go back to Kruger and Grisha. And the moment right before Kruger or the Owl gave Grisha the injection so that he could inherit the Attack Titan, he mentions Armin and Mikasa's names. And I can't remember the exact quote right now, but he's actually saying the exact same thing that Grisha told Eren right before he injected him. So that's really interesting. It's almost as if the act of injecting Grisha with the serum triggered a memory from the future from Grisha to Kruger, which suggests, in a way, that memories can jump from one person to another, theoretically, whether all parties are Titan Shifters or not. If Kruger can pick up on a memory from the future from Grisha before Grisha even inherited the Attack Titan, then that definitely suggests that non-Titanized Eldians can also have their memories transferred to Titan Shifters. And of course, because everything seems to go both ways in this anime, that also suggests that it's possible for memories to be transferred from Titan Shifters to regular non-Titanized Eldians as well. So in what we are obviously dealing with, if this is the case, is the paths. All Eldians, as Aaron said before, are connected through paths, whether they are a Titan Shifter or not. The first king, or the founding Titan, can manipulate the memories of Eldians, of all Eldians, regardless of their Titan status. So the paths are definitely something that works in a number of different directions and in a number of different ways. As we've seen, it can literally reshape memories, reshape bodies, physical bodies, and it can even transfer memories from the past and from the future to potentially any person that is part of the Eldian race. This ability just seems to be stronger, I think, with Titan Shifters. I definitely think that Eren seeing a potential future as a memory, as a vision, either from his own memory or somebody who might potentially inherit his Titan after all this is done, should be interesting. I definitely think this could happen. But moving on to the second possibility, and that is the possibility that this is actually a false memory that Eren is projecting onto other Eldians. Maybe not all Eldians, but just the ones that he needs to believe that this happened. Now, in order for this to be possible, Eren would obviously have had to have already activated the Founding Titan somehow. Specifically, I think it would be interesting if he was projecting this memory into Zeke's mind, like if they had touched and he had decided to use the Founding Titan to project a false memory into Zeke's head to make him think that he succeeded. That'd be kind of clever. <laughs> Maybe a little anticlimactic, but it would be clever. Anyway, or I guess rather make him believe that he couldn't succeed because Eren is dead. I don't know if that would have very good consequences though, but, <laughs> but anyway. If Eren is using the Founding Titan's power to project a false memory into the minds of somebody, then how could he have achieved this? Well, like I said, he could have gotten in contact with Zeke and projected this false memory into his head, or he could have projected this memory into somebody else's head, like Armin and Mikasa's or everybody else's. Who knows? We'd have to go through and weigh the pros and cons of how this memory might affect different characters, but that would be a very long discussion. But anyway, if it wasn't Zeke, if he didn't somehow already get in contact with Zeke and this is the memory that he produced for some reason to give to somebody, then how else could he have achieved this? Well, the only other person, of course, of royal blood that we know about is Historia. 
and she is not a titan. However, she is royalty, and as we've seen, she, by touching Eren, is able to trigger memories within him. This could come back into play, and going back to the future vision idea, she could be the one helping him to achieve this, this future projection. So that could be interesting as well. And of course she's got that baby who nobody knows who the daddy is. Okay, we've been told who the daddy is, but nobody really believes that, do we? <laughs> but anyway, I feel like she's got to come back into this somehow. There's something going on over there. Just to wrap all this up to a nice little package, here is one last possibility that I would like to propose. So I have a theory that maybe if this is a false memory, if this is a memory that is being put into the minds of other Eldians for some purpose, then I think it's very possible that the person projecting this memory isn't Aaron at all. I think it's possible that the person projecting this memory is actually Armin. Why? Well again, since we are dealing with the path, this idea that has been proposed throughout the story, and since we have had clues that these paths are basically have almost infinite possibilities, then it is possible, potentially along with the theory I proposed a little bit earlier in the video, where Armin would actually eat Eren after he died, he might be activating the founding titan which he gained from Eren to project memories into the past from the future, showing everyone what's going to happen, or maybe just showing Eren what's going to happen if he keeps going the way he's going. If we can potentially send memories from the future into the past, then this is entirely possible. There is one of those little info cards during the last season where it quoted someone as saying, I have to find another way, talking about the issue of people on the outside distrusting the Eldians and wanting to destroy them. It said, I have to find another way. And I definitely think that that was Armin that they were quoting. He's going to find another way to solve this problem. And it has to do something with the paths. It has to do something with all of this stuff that is just kind of hanging out in the background right now, waiting to be explained. You know, we can't just have this epic battle and then it'd be over. That would be so underwhelming. Like, something more has to be happening here. And those are my thoughts on that theory. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Come back soon, because like I said, I'm going to have my buddy on here. We're going to talk about Attack on Titan. We're going to talk about all our theories. We're going to have a good time. So look out for that. I hope you guys join us. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you next time. Peace.